Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. As always, want to start off the video by saying thank you to all the subscribers, all the viewers, all the supporters on the channel. Immensely appreciate the support. As it's the last day of trading today, 2017, I thought I'd go through and do an end of the year review of the entire portfolio. As you guys know, I try to do at least one of these reviews per month. This one's a little bit early, but I thought it was fitting that it's the end of the year, last trading day today. So I'd go through and kind of detail exactly what's in the portfolio at the end of 2017. And then I'd go ahead and do another one at the end of 2018 to kind of see how the portfolios have changed. As you can see here, the last day of trading did very, very well with the portfolio up 735.98, representing 0.52% of the overall portfolio. So not too bad for the last day of trading. As you can see there, after hours trading, a little bit of movement so far, but not a lot. And this is in contrast to the three major indices all ending in the red today. S&P 500 was down 14 points, 0.52%. The Dow 30 was down 119 points, 0.48%. And the NASDAQ down 47 points, 0.67%. Uh, as you guys know, I try to go through each one of my positions with regards to market sector. I have all of my stocks grouped into market sector. And I'll kind of highlight the big changes that I've been making over the last few weeks and then changes I anticipate to make in the next month or so. As I just quickly scroll through the portfolio, you can see quite a bit of red in the portfolio. Like I said, all three major indices were in the red today. There are a few market sectors that did well, but for the most part, a little bit of a sell-off on the last day of trading here of 2017. So let's go up to the top again. And again, we'll go through each one of these stocks, going through each of these by market sector. At the bottom of the page, you can see the number of shares I hold as well as equity value. And up on top, you can see the ticker symbol as well as the full name of the investment. So having said all that, let's kind of jump into the portfolio here. Up top, I have my high dividend yielding ETFs. And uh, just to kind of point out as well, a lot of these stocks I only have one share of. That's because when I originally formulated this portfolio, I wanted a very broad market sector representation of all market sectors. So I bought one stock on a lot of different uh, market sectors. And when I started developing the portfolio, I started adding to select positions, but I kind of kept the original stocks that I first established the portfolio. So that's why you see quite a few stocks here only have one or two shares. That's the reason. It's the original stocks I, uh, I first bought when I uh, basically put together the Robinhood portfolio. And that's really why there's only one share there. But I've kept them in the portfolio, again, just to get a very good a sense of what the overall market's doing. I have a very good representation of all market sectors, as you'll see as I go through the portfolio. But again, there's been a lot of comments on the comment threads, video threads, asking why I only have one share of a particular stock, and that's the reason. They are the original stocks that I uh, first put together, the Robinhood portfolio. So having said all that, let's jump again into the portfolio. Up top here, I have my high dividend yielding ETFs. First, starting with DVY here, again, on the bottom. Left of the screen, you can see the shares. And bottom right, you can see the equity value I have. So DVY here, an iShare Select Dividend ETF. SCHD, one share, 5117. SPDR, S&P 500 Dividend ETF, one share, 9448. One of the stocks I've talked extensively about in the portfolio, one of my favorite ETFs, high dividend, low volatility ETFs. They have 26 shares, 1103.44. And I also have a very large holding of this in my E-Trade account. So again, one of my favorite stocks for new investors. It has a monthly dividend, a high dividend, and it's a high dividend, low volatility fund. Very, very good fund. Then closing out my high yielding dividend ETFs, I have a Vanguard fund here. VYM, Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. Again, I only have one share here, but I have a larger holding in my E-Trade account. And I also have a Vanguard account. That I don't necessarily have this stock, but I have VOO, which is very similar to VYM. And you can see over the past one year, it's done exceptionally well, 16.1%. After my high dividend yielding ETFs, I have some healthcare stocks. First, starting with pharmaceutical companies, Avi Incorporated here, ABBV, Eli Lilly and Company, LLY, Pfizer, one of the first stocks I bought with a portfolio, PFE. And again, you can see on the bottom there, pharmaceuticals, I have a very large holding. AVI, 31 shares, 3,005. Uh, uh, Eli Lilly and Company, excuse me, five shares, 422. Pfizer, 120 shares, 4353.60. 
Portola, recently added to my position with Portola. You can see it's all most up to $50,000. This is a very high risk play with the portfolio. You can see here, here I jumped into a number of shares right around $47 to $48 or so. I think I jumped in for an additional $20,000. I was almost going to sell off here during uh, uh, morning trading, $49.33. I was looking to get up to $50. Would have been about a $2,300 swing trade. Did not quite get up to that point. Then it started trending back here. So I think I'm going to hold these stocks into 2018, looking at a $50 price point before selling off. And again, looking for probably around a $22 to $2,300 swing trade. But again, we'll kind of see how that plays out. Very, very risky play. You can see I have 977 shares, 47, 560, 36. Next here, I have uh, some healthcare services companies, ABT here, Abbott Laboratories, CAH, Cardinal Health, and Johnson & Johnson, J&J, &J, rounding out the healthcare stocks. Below that, I have some industrial stocks, first starting with Aerospace, BA Boeing, LMT, Lockheed Martin, GE. This is one of the plays that could be a very good contrarian play. You can see over the past one year, down 43.04%. If this does bounce back at all, this could be an extremely good investment. But again, with risk comes reward. With reward comes re uh, comes risk. You can kind of uh, look at that either way. If you want to have a very big reward, you have to take a lot of risk. And GE is definitely a risk here. 1749, maybe a very good entry point. I'm looking more at 16 to 17. If it gets below 17, I'll probably buy about two to three thousand shares. If it gets below 16, I'll probably buy 10 to 15,000, uh, excuse me, not shares, equity value, about 10 to 15,000 dollars worth of equity in this particular company. I do believe this would be a very, very good contrarian play. I do believe they can turn this around. And if you take a look at five years ago, 1798, it's less than it was five years ago. It's went through a number of different changes, changed most of its executive staff. It's also changing drastically its business operations. I think this is a quality company moving forward, but I don't think 1749 is quite the price point I would be jumping in with. But again, this could be a very, very good play over the next few years. Uh, below GE, I have 3M here, MMM. I have one uh, uh, machinery stock here, Illinois Toolworks, ITW. I have a couple of railroad companies here, CNI, Canadian National Railroad, as well as UNP, Union Pacific have one supply company here, International Paper, IP. And then rounding out the industrials here, I have one chemical company here, the merger between Dow and DuPont, Dow DuPont. Below my industrials, I have my consumer discretionary here. First starting with Ford, the largest holding in the portfolio, 4,225 shares, 52,728. You can see here it's been doing exceptionally uh, well here. I averaged down throughout this entire period here. And it's uh, up about... Let's see, over the last three months, 5.29% and 7.58% over the last one year. But again, you're going from 10 down to 8 up, so about 18% swing there. So very, very good play with Ford. It's got that great dividend on the bottom as well, 4.946%. You can see some of the dividend payments I've received with the portfolio, 633.75 and 464.40. That's been a very, very good play, very good stock for the portfolio overall. Below that, I have one other automotive company here, uh, GM. I just have one share of that. Uh, for uh, General Merchandise, Garmin, GRMN, and Target, TGT. Some restaurants here, MCD McDonald's, YUM, and YUMC, Yum Brands, and Yum Brands China. Then below that, I have one textile company, VFC, VF Corp. Then we move into... Uh, consumer staples after that, starting with agriculture here, Archer Daniels Midland. Just again, a couple shares of Archer Daniel Midland. A couple household product companies here, as well as foodstuffs, SYY Cisco, CL Colgate, KMB Kimberly Clark. And uh, rounding out uh, consumer staples here, I have some packaged goods, personal goods, and beverage companies. First starting here with HSY Hershey. KHC Craft Foods, and you can see on the bottom there, I've added a few stocks to this from the last portfolio review. Procter and Gamble, six shares, 551.28. BUD, Anheuser Busch Corporation, KO Coca Cola, PEP PepsiCo, 
And that rounds out the consumer staples. Now we jump into financials for starting with, again, one of the first stocks I bought with the Robinhood portfolio here, Bank of the Internet, B-O-F-I, Huntington Bank Shares, H-B-A-N, Morgan Stanley, M-S, and Wells Fargo and Company, W-F-C. One insurance company here, O-R-I, Old Republic. Below that, I have my information technology. Uh, start, first starting here with IBM, International Business Machines, AAPL, Apple, a couple of semiconductors I've recently talked about, AMD, INTC, Intel, and then Microsoft rounds out information technology here, uh, MSFT. Below that, a couple of telecoms, AT&T, T. You can see I have a very large holding of AT&T. I believe it's my third largest holding. I've done that because of the great dividend on the bottom there, 4.538. I was lucky enough to get in right around this area here. When it got down to $33, $34, I jumped in with the majority of those shares. You can see here, see here it's come up quite nicely here, up $5 or so. So very, very good uh, holding for the portfolio. Then just a couple shares of Verizon here. Recently did a very large dividend capture with Verizon, uh, but currently only $159 worth of equity value. Below that, one energy stock here, XOM. I have a couple utility companies here, Centerpoint Energy, CNP, Consolidated Edison, ED, and SO Southern. Then I have some nice uh, dividend-yielding real estate investment trust here, APLE, Apple Hospitality, FRT, Federal Realty Investment Trust, O Realty Income, and STAG, Stag Industrial Incorporated. And then below that, I have some closed-in funds and business development companies, GOF Gutenheim, PCM, PCM Fund, PSEC, Prospect Capital, PTY, PIMCO Corp, YYY, very unique business development and closed in funds, ETF, you can see just one share of that, but a very, very good dividend payment, 9.677 for YYY. And then just a couple other stocks rounding out the portfolio, kind of some miscellaneous stocks here, BlackRock, Corbon Trust, BHK, then some penny stocks here, some of these I can't trade with anymore. A warrant here, Bank of America, Marathon Patent Group, MARA, Acer Therapeutics, ACERW. Again, these are not able to be traded on Robinhood any longer. And then SDR, Sandridge Mississippian Trust. That's the end of the portfolio there. So, you know, kind of go back out to this screen here, scroll to the bottom, and then very slowly scroll up to, so you can see the entire portfolio once again. So that is the portfolio for 2017 here. The last day of trading, end of the day in green. And overall, a very, very good day of trading. But definitely some positions here I'm looking to probably add to. And maybe over the next uh, several months here, I might start weaning out some of the stocks I only have one share of. The idea of keeping these stocks in the portfolio was for the tax consequences of that. If I can get these stocks... Uh, qualified for greater than one year. There are tremendous tax savings for that, as you guys know. And I'll be putting out a few more videos since it's the end of the year as well about the preferred capital gains rates, dividend rates, how you can qualify for both of those. And there's tremendous advantages for doing that. Uh, right off the top, you can save yourself 10 up to 30% or at least around 20% with taxes. So if you think about that, simply by holding a stock for greater than one year, you can make 20% on money with regards to saved tax uh, obligations. So very, very powerful. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But since I'm kind of getting over the one-year point for most of those stocks, I probably will start selling off some positions that I only have one or two shares of and then start adding to positions that I feel like are going to be better buy and hold strategy stocks. I'll also continue doing a lot of day trading and swing trading, dividend capture, really just experimenting with the portfolio and having a little bit of fun. Again, the whole idea behind this portfolio was to have fun and learn about investing. I think I've done both of those and made quite a bit of money in the process as well. So hopefully over 2018, I can keep that up. So please let me know what you guys are doing with your portfolios moving into 2018. Let me know what you guys think of the portfolio, if there are areas that you would add to, uh, other positions that I have that you may take away from. Obviously, Portola here is one of the riskier plays in the portfolio. I think I have definitely way too much capital in this stock. I probably should have sold off in that nice swing trade here. Uh, got a little bit greedy, decided to hold through. The stock did trend back here a bit. But again, if this gets up to around maybe 49.75, 50, I'm going to sell 
a large majority of my equity value off, probably $20,000 or so. Again, a very risky play, which I think will have a very, very good uh, reward later on in 2018. But again, a very risky play, and I'm not sure I'm comfortable putting that much capital into one individual stock, especially a small biotech that is very, very risky. So definitely looking to get out of this, at least half of my capital in a swing trade. But again, let me know what you guys think about not only Portola, but the rest of the portfolio here. So not to make the video too long, I'll kind of end it here. As always, if you guys enjoy my videos, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate all of your guys' comments on the videos. If you guys have a question about this one or others, please let me know. Any good video ideas or any great stocks that you want to jump into. I know you guys have given me quite a few stocks to take a look at over the last few months here. And there's been some very, very good picks in there. And to be quite honest, a lot of the portfolio initially was because of user comments, viewer comments, suggesting particular stocks. That's how I found Portola. That's how I found Stag Industrial, for example. Some very, very good stocks that have been doing very, very well in the portfolio. So again, not to make the video too long, I'll kind of end it here and we'll see you guys next video.